Hi, welcome to our channel Talks on Management and Research. In today's session, we are going to discuss about the concept of reliability and validity and how do we have to use these concepts in SPSS. Now first let us talk about reliability. What is the meaning of the term reliability in research? To make it simple, reliability indicates that it is repeatability or consistency of the test result and validity refers to the accuracy of the measuring instrument. Say for example, if at all I wanted to check my weight and let's say that my correct weight is 70 kg and I am checking my weight in a weighing machine. The weighing machine repeatedly shows that my weight is 68 kg. However, my correct weight is 70 kg but consistently it is giving the result which is very close to 68. In this case, I say that the weighing machine is reliable but not valid. The reason being why it is not valid because the result is not accurate. Another weighing machine, when I am checking the weight multiple times, one time it is showing 68, another time it is showing 73, another time it is showing 67. This indicate that it is neither reliable nor it is valid. So reliability indicates that it is about the repeatability or consistency of the test result and validity indicate that how accurate it is. Right. So now coming to this concept of validity, the validity the most common method of validity what we will be using for data analysis purposes, construct validity. What do you mean by the term construct validity? Now first we need to understand the concept of construct. Basically, construct is an abstract idea or a concept which can be measured with multiple questions. Say for example, uh, we can say honesty, reliability, trustworthiness, commitment, all these are concepts. Okay, And these concepts can't be measured with only one question. We need to measure these concepts with several questions. Now this is what we call it as construct. Now how do we establish construct validity? Construct validity means that when you are asking those questions to capture a particular construct, it should actually measure that particular construct. Now let us explain more about this construct validity by uh, classifying the construct validity into two different types. We can broadly classify the construct validity into two different types. One is that convergent validity and another one is that discriminant validity. What is convergent validity? As I have already told you the concept of construct which is nothing but an abstract idea or a construct say a qualitative variable which can be measured with multiple question and let us say for example let us take a concept of we wanted to measure whether a person is an extrovert or an introvert. Now when you wanted to classify somebody as an extrovert or an introvert or an ambivert we can't ask with only one question we need to ask with several questions. What are all those questions? We can ask like you know are you a talkative person? We can ask are you a silent person? How comfortable that you are talking in front of the strangers? So based on these questions we can classify somebody as an extrovert or introvert or an ambivert for that matter. Now these questions has to be interrelated with each other. I mean say for example if somebody is an extrovert he should be a talkative person and he should not be a silent person and he should be very comfortable talking with the strangers. So these are all some of the characteristics of an extrovert and this would be an opposite characteristics of an introvert. So convergent validity refers to the indicators okay, or the item loadings should be intercorrelated with each other and when this intercorrelation is very high that establish the concept of convergent validity. In fact we can test the concept of convergent validity using exploratory factor analysis in SPSS and if the average factor loading of a particular construct is above 0.7 then we can say that uh, it is actually testing uh, the concept of convergent validity. The another one is we call it as discriminant validity. What do you mean by this discriminant validity? Discriminant validity indicate that when you are measuring different type of construct though you are asking different 
indicators, different questions to measure each and every construct. The questions for a particular construct should be different from the questions what you are asking for the other construct. I mean that when you are getting the response for construct 1 should be different from the response what you are getting for construct 2. Let's say construct 1 you are trying to capture uh, whether a person is an extrovert or an introvert. Construct 2 you are having some of the questions uh, which is related with trust and trustworthiness. So the response what you are getting for construct 2 should be different from the response what you are getting for construct 1. And this difference between uh, the uh, indicator is what we call it as discriminant validity. So convergent validity talks more about how the items are correlated with each other. Discriminant validity talks about how the items are not correlated between each other across different construct. Right. So now I think we have got an understanding of about what is reliability and as well as validity. And here using SPSS we are going to figure out what is the reliability of our data what we are having using a test called Cronbach Alpha. Let's go to SPSS. Right. Now here I have a data for our uh, demo purpose. Now here using this data I am going to test the construct what I have chosen is reliable or not. Now for that purpose I am going to click on analyze then you choose an option called reliability analysis. The path is analyze scale reliability analysis. Okay. Now I'm going to choose only the construct. So now here the construct is life satisfaction, right? So I have asked five statements related with life satisfaction. So I'm bringing all these statements towards the right hand side. And in this box, you have to choose something called scale if item deleted, right? So click on continue. Okay, click on OK. Now you can see that the Cronbach Alpha test is 0.62, which indicate that it is moderately correlated. If the Cronbach Alpha value is between 0.6 to 0.8, it shows that it is moderately correlated. Coming down, you can see that you can see that in the item total statistic table. If you are deleting this life satisfaction excellent variable, your Cronbach alpha values improves from 0.62 to 0.816. We can test it. Again, I am going to this data, analyze, scale, reliability. This time I am going to remove this excellent. I'm going to click on OK. Now you can see that or Kuronbach alpha value has improved from 0.6 to 0.8 which shows that it is highly reliable. Now it is a researcher's choice whether to remove the particular indicator from the construct or not. Right. Now I think you have got an understanding of about how do you have to calculate the reliability. Next comes the validity. Now uh, unlike reliability it is not very easy to figure out the validity using SPSS, we need to use both SPSS as well as Excel to figure out what is the validity. And as I have said, we are going to uh, use both construct validity, meaning convergent validity as well as discriminant validity. Okay. For that, I'm going to use factor analysis for this purpose. All right. Go to analyze, go for dimension reduction, go to factor. Now in this case, already I have chosen all these life satisfaction towards the right hand side because this is the construct which I wanted to uh, classify into two components and then I wanted to check whether it is having convergent validity and discriminant validity. Go to descriptives okay, and choose this KMO and Bartless test of veracity. Continue. Extraction, need not to change anything. Rotation, you can choose direct oblimin rotation. Okay, click on continue. Then go to scores, no need to choose anything. Go to options. Okay, here you can choose the absolute value below 0.4 or you can also choose it as 0.3, doesn't matter. Okay, so by this way, we are actually uh, reducing the noise. Click on continue, click on OK. Right. Now this is the value that you have got 
Now this is just for a demo purpose, so you may not get a perfect uh, KMO and Butler's test. Of course, it is above 0.5, which is acceptable range, and it is significant also. Okay. Now come down, right, and you can see this pattern matrix. Now this is the matrix that you have to focus on it. So through this pattern matrix, we can say that our five statements has been divided into two major variables. This is component one and component two. And you can see that component one, uh, some of the items like ideal, satisfied is having high inter item correlation. In component two, life satisfaction, excellent statement and life satisfaction, life over is having high inter item correlation. That's the reason why it has been divided into two components. You can ignore this science that doesn't make any difference in the analysis. Now you have to copy this and you have to go to Excel and you have to paste it. And then you also need to look out for the component correlation matrix. So you have to choose both these tables and copy it separately in, in the Excel for further analysis. Now here you have to figure out, you have to find the square of this. Here, you have to square it, okay? You have to square the component one, okay? You can delete it. You also need to square component two as well. Okay, all right, and you also need to figure out so that is uh, variance of component one extracted extracted. Okay, and this is variance of component 2 that we have extracted okay and average factor loading okay of component 1 and average factor loading of component 2 okay here i am calculating the average uh, factor loading for component 2 so it is average factor loading for component 2 so which is coming 0 0.18501 here we need to do a small correction because we have to ignore this negative sign so I am removing this right so here you can see that it is above 0.7 which is above the threshold limit so if you can look at this presentation where we have mentioned that the average factor loading should be above 0.7 to prove that the data uh, fulfills the assumption of convergent validity so which is about 0.7 so it proves that the convergent validity is established now we are focusing on the discriminant validity now here for discriminant validity already we have squared the factor loading now we need to take average of this so average average of the squares which we call it as average variance extracted and here also it is average of the right okay now this is what we call it as ave of component one and ave of component 2 now this is ave of component 1 and this is average variance extracted of component 2 if you can look at the presentation you can see that according to discriminant validity the average variance extracted should be above the square of correlation what is the correlation value here it is mentioned at the bottom left which we have took it from spss so here i'm going to square it okay again here it is 0 0.0229 same value so which is much above so 
AVE is greater than the square of correlation. So when I'm comparing these two cells, obviously 0.63 is much greater than 0.022 and 0.64 is much greater than 0.03. So we are also establishing the discriminant validity, right? So in this video, we have covered the concept of reliability, validity, and uh, we have tested these concepts using SPSS with the sample data what we are having and we have proved the Kornbach Alpha convergent validity as well as discriminant validity using SPSS and Excel. Thank you very much.